is Ann and John Alexander. I figured out the secret to have a great show is find the most beautiful girls. <laughs> his fashions were risque. I love his designs. I'm going to get this in every color. His persona was larger than life. He would say that he has powers like God. And he surrounded himself with beautiful young models. He just put it out there that they all loved him. They're his girls. Then in 2008, a jury convicted Anand John of 14 felonies, including one count of rape and seven counts of lewd acts upon children. He was a grown man. I was 14 years old. Mr. Alexander masquerades as a fashion designer, similarly to the way pedophiles surround themselves with children. His supporters said he was the target of a conspiracy. We want justice. Yes, we we want Why is he being victimized like this? Who framed him? Are they so desperate to get me? Why? Put the truth out there. What they're accusing of me, that's not what happened. Hi, I'm Laura Ling. The case of Ann and John is a complex story about sex crimes committed against young women. But it also has everything to do with the intoxicating power of fame. In this episode of E! Investigates, we'll look at the transformation of a fashion designer who became a convicted felon. Ann and John is sort of the pampered son of a well-to-do family from southern India. He came to the United States in the early 1990s to go to art school in Florida. After that, he moves up to New York City. He was very ambitious, and he was just full of ideas, very creative. He had a great sense of style. He was extremely confident. It was like meeting a magician or something. His uh, attitude mesmerized you. In 1999, John became the first Indian designer to show a collection at Bryant Park as part of New York Fashion Week. He had a real gift for making drapey clothes that seemed very voluptuous and very sensitive to Indian meets America culture. Anand was embraced by the fashion community because his clothing was very timely. Madonna was doing the henna, Gwen Stefani was wearing the bindis. So he brought out his first collection and it took off. I mean, Henry Bendel was carrying his clothes. India now had a hero in the fashion world, pretty much. There was no one for him, really. Anand's clear thing was to be perceived as the designer for the upper class socialites in America. He would meet these people who were top tier marquee names and Forbes list, make their clothing for free, and they'd show up again and again. He would have the daughters of some of these socialites in his fashion events. He understood that if he was accepted by New York society, that that might open doors to the larger world of celebrity. But there was a method to his madness. Paris Hilton became one of Anand's favorite muses. Paris, she's a natural, and I know her body really well. I know her sensibility. She has a pretty good idea of mine. You know, it's just three-letter word, sex. Now, kidding. It's, it's, you know, it's classy, but it's sexy, but it's fun. So I try to pick pieces, almost designed with her in mind. How do you feel? Huh? Fame was the number one important thing to Anand. He was addicted to it instantly. His ego just got bigger and bigger and bigger, and he wanted more. He wanted to be the god of fashion. Period. Did Anand use his celebrity status to attract women and, and models? Oh, yeah. He would send maybe a picture or one of his articles to some new prospective model. He would say, you could have been at this party. These are the people that you could be interacting with. And it was come and be a part of my world. And any young girl aspiring to be a model would have to listen. Did you ever get the feeling that something just wasn't right? The only time I knew something was really, really wrong was when I saw it in front of my face. Can you tell me what you did see? I brought a, an actual model to one of his events. 